Hey guys, welcome to another one of our videos. I'm the Worm, and this is the Proton. Uh, today we're doing another clear miser tank that we, which we did receive free of charge. Uh, this will not affect our review in any way, shape, or form. We've got this from uh, vapegear.co.uk, so big thank you to Keith and the lovely Kirsty as always. Always. Um, yeah, so today we are doing the. What we're doing today, guys, is the Kangatech Unitank kit from vapegear.co.uk. Little kit, kind of used to it now from, uh, from Kanga. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go straight down into have a little close look at it, then we'll come back to, to us and do all the flapping that we usually do. So yeah, we'll take a look now. Back up in a sec. Right guys, just a quick up and close of the Kanga um, Uni Tank, which our vapor have sent down to us, Keith and Kirsty, lovely stuff. Um, we've got two, they will come completely sealed, um, and that is what it is. I've unsealed it because I've had a little play, basically. At the moment, I'll show you what you get in here. Fairly, fairly familiar with this kind of setup now, guys, with these kind of little Clear miser starters, if you like. Um, ego ring in there just to cover up your, uh, your ego thread. And if you're going to use this on an ego battery, it's fairly easy stuff. You've got two spare heads here. Um, again, we're kind of used to these now, guys. Pro tank heads. What can you do? They're pro tank heads. I'm um, just checking. That's a 2.5 ohm. And if this one's the same, then they'll all be the same, won't they? Uh, and that's a 2.5 ohm. So we go, we've got three 2.5 ohm heads included because there's one in the device. There you go. Um, that's kind of that dealt with now. Into the device itself, firstly, drip tip, wicked stuff, 510, blends, love it. Um, the rest of it is kind of a bit, woohoo, for a Kanga product anyway, because they seem to be sticking to their guns with bottom core, but they're chopping and changing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart and I'll explain it all as I put it back together. So you've got your drip tip, you've got your top cap, you have your tank section, which is polycarbonate I believe, um, it feels like polycarbonate, at best it's polypropylene um, which and the metal is uh, the metal is attached to that tank um, on it you've got Kanga Tech and Uni Tank written um, which is awesome source into your centre you have this sleeve, silicon at the base sleeve um, and that is what it is you've then got a big old spring uh, and then obviously your, your atomizer head and then your, your base with your 510 in it Right, so putting it back together, what we'll do is explain how it works. 510 base with a head put into it. The spring then goes over the atomizer base, not the atomizer, sorry. Then, <laughs> if you look down here, you've got a little sort of skirt in there, okay? That's your spring to sit against, so then that basically comes up here. As these push together, that makes your sort of seal there with a super silicon touching. Um, I'll go on to this bit now because it's going to be harder to show later. In this um, head here, okay, you've got silicon and that kind of sits in there like so, pushing down, creating your sill, top and bottom. Um, in your tank you've kind of got flanges, hopefully you can see those guys, and basically that goes up there like that and then it slots through the one at the top like so. Um, and it kind of gives you two sections in the tank. Um, one, obviously, your juice will sit in both, but it kind of sits down here a little bit less than it does here. Air tends to catch underneath that little skirting just because it does. Uh, you have to give it a little shake around to get the air out, but I've never had any problems. General moving will do that for you, but that is what it is. Um, filling it, top filled, bottom coiled. Strange co um, combination from them, but that's what they've gone with, so that's what we're doing. Um, what we've got, let's have a look, silver juices we've got. Lovely bit of rhubarb and custard from Vape Gear. Awesome stuff. Um, and then what you do guys is just a standard fill procedure just down the hole and away you go. Um, this is kind of what I was saying though. If you see here, your top section, I'm gonna to have to try and cover that. Your top section is full whilst your bottom section isn't. Um, and when I first saw this, I was a bit like, okay. Um, so I gave it a couple of minutes to sort of sort itself out and get itself down. Um, but if you're an impatient little sausage like me, then you won't bother doing that. And then as you give this a push, it allows the juice to enter that bottom chamber. Basically, it's sealed from the coil. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a strange one, really, because. The juice is now in there and it's able to flow to the coil, which is fair enough. Um, but you can't change this atomizer head without that tank being empty. Um, I suppose what you could do, just thinking about it, is flip it. Oh, sorry guys, I'm just having a little bit of an experimentation. Flip it and sort of tap it until your juice returns back to 
the normal world, then kind of undo it, allowing it to make its connection, then pop the bottom out, I don't know, I have no idea how that would work, I don't think, I imagine that would, for me, that wouldn't fare well anyway, I imagine that's the intention behind it, so you can basically flip it upside down, get rid of the juice, undo the top cap a bit, allowing it to make its connection, then flip it, pull the head out, it just it doesn't seem that that would work to me, but that is what it is. Um, and then obviously, install your 510 drip tip, haven't had any that don't fit, um, but that is what it is, it's a bottom coil, top fill, Kanger product, so it's, it's different, it's new, so we'll have a little vape and see how we go. Was the uh, up close of the Unitank, um, all, all of its little pieces and bits and bobs. We weren't when we first looked at it, it was like, What the hell? because it was just a little bit of a weird setup, but um, yeah, that is what it is. Um, showed you all the bits and bobs in the close up, standard 510 drip tip, 510 connection, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a bit of a strange one, this Unitank, I'm not quite sure as to the purpose of it, but that is what it is. 10.99 from Vape Gear for the full kit that is, um, which I don't think is bad at all. Forgot to show you the instructions. You do get a little card that Kanga do send you now um, with your resistances uh, recommended and so on and so forth in there. Um, <laughs> it's not a bad price to be fair. It's 10.99 for a kit, uh, three atomizer heads and an ego cone. Not bad price at all. Um, bits and bobs about it. <sighs> it's strange. I don't like. <laughs> I mean, personally, it's got Unitank written on it, I don't think it needs that, and really, like, I just don't get what the polycarbonate's about. Protanks are always kind of notorious for their um, glass, and I know this isn't a protank, but you'd imagine they're going to stick with that same kind of principle. Um, and it's bottom coil, top fill. <laughs> why? Just why? Um, I haven't really found a need for it. I mean, a few things about it. I've noticed... I get dry hits a fair bit on this if I push it anywhere past 4 volts and um, this is a 2.8 ohm head or registering 2.8 and anything past 4 volts is just dry hitting on me um, which is a pain which is a pain because I can run a pro tank at 4 volts and not get dry hits um, but as I know the bottom cause you have to be a little bit gentle with but um, yeah this seems to dry hit slightly more I don't know why I think it's maybe because of the way it's designed obviously you've got that plunger that comes down as you put the top on which then allows e-liquid to get into the bottom chamber we'll call it where the coil is and maybe it's because you've got that separation or segregation in the tank but the whole pressure of the e-liquid isn't pushing it through to the coil as much but um I do seem to get a few more dry hits with this than I did with the um with the protein 2 for example and the protein 3. Yeah it's, it's kind of like they've taken something that works overcomplicated it it still works just not as efficiently and it's just like it is a good bit of design because it's, it's, it's innovative, it, let's put it that way. I mean, it, it possibly what they're trying to get for it to do just isn't coming across with this. Maybe it could be our fault for using 50 50 juices all the time. Maybe it works a lot better on like the uh, 70 30s or the this 80 is 60 40. Well, still, it's, it's still going to be slightly thicker than the 70 30s and uh, 80, 80 20s and possibly 90 10s, whatever you vape personal use in that. But um, for our 50 50 juice or the 60 40 that's in it at the moment, it's. Um, it's not wicking you can't, efficiently. You can't chain vape it, you can't break vape this. Um, you have to have a puff, give it a second, have a puff. Whereas I tend to sit there and go puff, 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 puff for five minutes, but then sit it down. So probably partly down to vape habit, I guess. Um, what else have I noticed with it? Well, the, with a Nova, for example, cause at the top, you undo the top, you fill it from the top, put it back together. Okay, that's that's okay. With a Protank Evo or anything that Kango have made, um, barring a couple of early clearamizers, they're all bottom coil and the idea behind that is that you can unscrew your coil, whop it out, stick a new one in and it's still got a tank of juice in um, and you haven't had to empty your tank. This doesn't do that because as soon as you undo that base, obviously the spring will doing um, and, and then it will then leak juice. Now I don't know whether the intention is that they are meant to be able to do that but it just doesn't, it just doesn't, as you, I mean if I, I've tried to fill this from the bottom a couple of times just because I wanted to see if I could. Um, and you undo the top and your plunger kind of comes up and blocks it off, but then you undo the bottom and that's it, it's just all havoc. So it's still juicing so It's still juicing the top and it just leaked the whole lot. So as far as I'm concerned, the, the advantage of a bottom core clearamizer or glassomizer would be because 
you, you, that's one of the main advantages of it. Is that's what it is. Is that you can change your head without getting your hands too dirty. Just wipe it out, stick it in. Haven't even got to worry about changing and taking of juice. And that's kind of been eradicated in this, as well as the complicated design. As Worms pointed out, you've got a spring involved and a couple of little silicon plungers, and you've got more silicon to wear out now than you've had in a pro tank. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't get the inspiration behind it. Why would you not just make it top cord if this is the design you're going to go for? Why get rid of the Pyrex, which is one of the reasons people love pro tanks, um, and go with this kind of complicated stuff? I guess this is meant to be a, a mi an in between between the pro tank. Uh, and the EVOD as it kind of meets here, but price wise, it's too. It, it, it's, I mean, on vape gear, it's cheap, everything on vape gear is cheap. Um, but you go to if you buy this from somewhere else, I'd imagine you're dangerously close to a pro tank price. Um, and I think you're losing quite a few of the advantages that a pro tank offers. That's just my personal opinion. Another one is that the top cap there is part of the tank system. So if this tank was to go on you because of the juice cracking issue that now isn't stopped by glass. You couldn't even replace that tank very easily. It'd just be a pain in the arse. I don't get it personally. I mean, I, I assume they're trying to do something new and Different. and dangled, and they're trying to work something out. I mean, maybe the version two will perform basically like the the Pro Tank two did to the boards of the Pro Tank one. Um, the Pro Tank one was notorious for occasional bad heads and that, but they fixed that when they come out with the Pro Tank two, and even more so with the Pro Tank three. Um, I do like the mechanics in it, like the way like there's a plunger system in there that stops your juice from coming out when you're filling it up and all that sort of stuff. Because you generally would fill a tank when it's right at the bottom, so I understand that, but why not make those holes a little bit bigger? Why not give you a big old well for the juice to fall down? It would be so much easier for it to wicken it and pull solve that wicking issue. I think because the higher up they go, the less juice, because obviously your first fill... No, no, around the actual hole where the juice goes in. Oh, okay. Why couldn't that be all the way around mm. and just the plunger that comes up and covers that? I don't know. I it's, mean, it's a bit there's so many things itself. that obviously that in design they've obviously realised it can't happen and whatever. So, but uh, yeah, should we go into our 10 point? Um, yeah, we can do, yeah. Um, I'll go first, I suppose. Looks wise, I mean, obviously I've got my own drip tip in there. But a drip tip becomes what you see in the post. So I like the look of it, I do. I, I like, although I've just said it's a down point because if the tank goes straight place, I like the fact that's blended there. Um, I do not like exposed threads through polycarbonate, though I'd like to see a sleeve or a similar thing to the the, uh, the top that's on the bottom. Um, but looks wise, it's getting a nine and a half. Me, I think it's quite a good looking tank. I don't think looks wise it's, it's suffering at all. It's Kang stuff. Kang stuff always generally looks stylized to something, and it always looks reasonably, if not really good. Uh, I'm going to give it a nine. For looks. Um, usability. In terms of actual usability, it is more complicated than something like a little pro tank would be, um, purely because you've got the metal pole that you've got a sort of seat in, then a spring goes into it, you put your outer head into your um, base, and then you put that through the spring and it kind of all works off each other. It's not hard to use, and you do get your instructional bit, but it's not as easy as its brothers and sisters are, so I'm going to give it an 8 for usability. Yeah, usually I don't really like it. There's stuff that can go wrong that immediately with just by using it. Um, it's not overly hard, but I'm going to give it a seven, just because it is a little bit fiddly in places. Indeed, um, maintenance of it. Atomizer head change now and again, which you can't do with a tank full of juice anymore, um, which obviously knocks it down. Um, other than that, cleaning it really, same old stuff, taking it apart, cleaning it, but you have got more parts to wash out for, you have got a spring involved that could quite happily find its way down a sinkhole. So, um, yeah, use a, uh, sorry maintenance, sorry, um, I'm going to give it a 7 for maintenance, I, I do think it's taking hits. Yeah, I'm going to agree, for something that just works before and they've tried to make something new, they've kind of overcomplicated it to a point where it's just, it's more than you need to worry about now in a clear miser, and um, yeah, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Um, Flavour and vapour. Flavour, I think, is actually fairly good from this tank. I think it's slightly better than a Pro Tank 2, which is a good thing because it needed to be, really. Um, I'm going to give flavour an 8.5. I don't think the flavour of this is bad at all. Barring the dry hit thing, which again, having been vaping it away, having this review not been a problem, um, it's just I prefer, like I say, to sit there and bang, 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 and then stick it down for another half hour. Um, and this is not something you can particularly chain vape, but then. To its credit, most clear misers aren't. Um, flavour, I'm going to give an eight and a half. Vapour, I think, is more than enough to replicate a cigarette. I'd say it's more than I get from my Pro Tank 2 on a standard head. 
Um, so I'm going to give it a 9 for Vapor as well. I don't think these are bad marks for Flavor Vapor at all. Yeah, in terms of it being like a clearomizer, um, flavour is definitely better than Protein 2. Um, it just that occasional dry heat lets it down on it. Uh, but the flavour, when it does come through, it's actually very nice. Um, I'm going to give it like an 8.5. Uh, for vapor, again about an 8.5 because obviously dry hits you get less vapor and it's it, the way I we vape anyway is quite hard. Um, it, it, it could just like other clear seem to just keep up with us, whereas this one seems to just fall short with us. It, it's only normally like the last couple of drags just before we put it down that it's going dry, but it's just that that lets it down a little bit. So in Dingle, um, and overall, um, I think this I'm looking at this in two ways. One is a very critical kind of way, in my point of view, I guess. Um, and from that view, I'm going to give it a six. Um, in the grand scheme of things, though, having if I bought this for eleven quid, I'd say it's worth eleven quid. The vape, the vape is pretty good. It does dry hit now and again, but most clearos do, including the Pro Tanks. Um, I'd like to have seen that be Pyrex or some some description of, or maybe polypropylene or something like that. Um, but in general. From that kind of point of view, it's a nine. I don't think it's a bad purchase. I just think that they've done things to it that aren't necessarily beneficial. Yeah, um, th th there's quite a few marks here for overall for me. I mean, if you're a clearomizer user only, you're gonna love this tank, and you use it as a clearomizer should be like a couple of pulls, put it down, a couple of pulls, put it down, sort of thing. You're gonna love this tank. It's it's, it's phenomenal. It's better than the Pro Tank One, and I paid uh, fifteen ninety nine for my Pro Tank One, and this one is only ten ninety nine. And it's already performing better, so on that regards, it's really good. Um, but if you're a heavier vapor like me and Mr. Proton are, um, it's still good for an out and about vape. But I don't think it would be our go-to tank when we're at home or anything like that. It'll be just kind of like you pick it up, you use it when you need to when you're out and about, and you wouldn't mind it being broke or whatever. It's just kind of like one of those ones which is there to be used and abused when you need it to be. But it's not going to be your all-day vape, so. Yeah, take it as you will. If you're a clear miser you use it all the time, it's, it's going to be a nine. If you're kind of like us and we're into our rebuildables, it's going to sit around about a six for our out and abouts, kind of when we need it. There you go. Um, I don't necessarily think it's negative on this one. I just don't think um, I don't think it was a move in the right direction from Kanga to be honest no. with you. Um, but it is what it is. It does what it does, and uh, I don't think it's bad. I just think it could be better. Um, Obviously, be thank you to Kevin Kirsty for sending here, 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 for sending this down to us to have a little play with. Uh, I'm obviously grateful for him for doing that. Mainly Kirsty. Of course, mainly oh. always Kirsty. <laughs> um, quick cliff note, guys. We have got some more vape gear juice reviews coming up soon. Sent us for a few more juices along with this tank. Um, yeah, it is my fault, by the way. Uh, I've got vapor's tongue at the moment, and I can't taste anything. So juice reviews are being delayed uh, until the Minji's tongue is back up and flapping as it should be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the juice reviews will be coming as soon as uh, the tongue has rectified itself. Um, but other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've been Mr. Proton. It's been the worm. See you soon. soon.